This is Steve Zeltzer with Work Week, and I'm joined today by Leif Gulam. He is with the University of Minnesota in, in gender, women's sexuality studies, and he also has been involved in the struggle at San Francisco State University to defend the Ahmed program there. Welcome to Work Week, Leif. Thank you, Steve. Leif, why don't you talk about a little background before we get into the most recent uh, controversy about the attack on the program there at San Francisco State? I recently graduated from San Francisco State, uh, their graduate program in the College of Ethnic Studies, which is quite, fa- quite famous for being the first College of Ethnic Studies uh, in the United States. Um, and I started going to uh, San Francisco State in 2020, um, and I became uh, involved in the, the Ahmed Studies program, which is Arab and Muslim Ethnicities and Diaspora Studies. Um, uh, and I began work- began working with Dr. Rabab Abdulhadi, um, who is the, the director of Ahmed Studies. Um, and just some background about uh, the program, about the environment. Um, I kind of didn't really know uh, what I was getting into at, at San Francisco State, um, uh, but I kind of became, uh, you know, as a student, I really felt like I kind of got like thrown into this kind of very complicated history um, uh, of, uh, very strong Zionism presence on campus, anti-Palestinian sentiment, and kind of this broad kind of uh, uh, anti-Arab American studies and ethnic studies, uh, within ethnic studies kind of sentiment um, that that I really didn't expect going in. Um, And so for a long time, the the school has been, the administration has been uh, very publicly kind of uh, struggling with this, this issue um, of Palestine activism, and they tend to side uh, on, on the side of, uh, of donors um, and uh, 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 allowing Zionism to have a very heavy presence on campus, um, uh, which also includes some of these uh, groups like Halal International, uh, Academic Engagement Network, um, the, the ADL, uh, the David Horowitz Freedom Center has, has made uh, attacks to uh, Dr. Abdelhadi on the campus. Um, and the administration really hasn't done a lot on the side of um, uh, kind of Palestinian activism. Uh, and just to get into a little bit of the background on uh, this, uh, this uh, letter that we worked on uh, that was a response to the SFSU campus climate assessment report, which is what um, the name of what the administration administration sent out to all students, faculty, and alumni, um, which is how I, I first saw it. Um, so the report was actually initiated, um, I believe in early 2021. Um, uh, it was a collaboration between Hillel, Hillel International um, and the Academic Engagement Network and San Francisco State. Um, it, was, it was done, um, uh, between the three of them. And it was actually initiated around the time that uh, a lot of these conversations were happening on campus around Palestinian activism, around Ahmed studies, uh, around ethnic studies, around um, Muslims feeling safe on campus. And um, during this time, I, I, I was invited to um, this meeting with the president uh, of the university, along with uh, some other students and faculty um, uh, uh, some student organization like, like GUPS, um, I think S- someone from SJP was there as well. Um, uh, students for Justice in Palestine is SJP and General Union Palestinian Students is GUPS. And there, there, was, there was a lot of people from GUPS there. Um, and during that meeting, I don't know if, I, I think I've been uh, uh, on record saying this before, but during that meeting, an invited guest uh, by the administration uh, kind of started cursing out some of the GUPS students. Um, and the, the, the conversation really unraveled. Her last name was Hijazi. She was a, she worked for an NGO in the San Francisco Bay Area and did some work with the city as well. The conversation kind of didn't really unfold kind of after that. So we didn't get a lot of background on what her involvement was with SFSU or kind of what was happening there. And Hillel International, what is that? And are, do they get funding from the Israeli government? So I'm not too sure about the, the, the funding um, aspect of it, but Hillel International is a uh, Jewish student life organization on many university campuses, some universities, very active uh, Hillel chapters. Um, 
uh, but they tend to take a very like hardline stance uh, in support of Israel. They tend to condemn activism for Palestine as being anti-Semitic. They had a part in this, a very significant part in this campus climate report climate report, which had a lot of issues, which which we can also talk about. And the ADL, the Anti-Defamation League, mm-hmm. uh, they have been actually sued. I was a plaintiff uh, mm-hmm. that they were spying on critics of Israel. And also they were spying on activists in South Africa, Black activists. They had to pay money for illegal spying. And they apparently operate quite closely with the Israeli government. Yes, definitely. And I remember, uh, well, I guess it was in 2021 now, during all the attacks by the Israeli government, the ADL was actually like a very significant topic of conversation because they were at this point labeling statements like Free Palestine or support for Palestine as anti-Semitic hate speech, which was, I guess, to the the essence of this new campus climate report, because part part of the issue with this campus climate I, and again, I don't like the name of the campus climate assessment report because it doesn't really, it sounds like it's talking about the environment, which it isn't really what it's talking about. And I, I guess I can say what, what it is the report. So the report is basically trying to tie Zionism to Jewish identity, saying it's an integral part of Jewish identity, saying that criticism of Zionism should be the same as criticism against, I guess, anti-Semitism is basically what the campus climate report is saying. So, so you're, if you're, in other words, if you're critical of uh, Zionism and the Israeli state, then you're anti anti-Semitic. Exactly. And, and Judaism equals Zionism. Exactly. That that was very much what a lot of us really gleaned from the report. It was heavily implied. And it's interesting too, because I mean, the report was done like a survey of Jewish students, a survey of students on campus at San Francisco State. I believe there are more, I, I believe there are a number of these reports. I, I think they were all initiated around the same time, but I've only seen the San Francisco State one. But interestingly enough, in the report, Jewish students actually said that they they didn't like that kind of equivalency being made. But then they decide they even like showed that that was the result, but then added their own analysis that just did not (laughs) seem to reference that data point, which was very interesting. And so that's, you know, the ADL also kind of pushed forward, pushes forward that rhetoric, that uh, criticism of of the government of Israel, criticism of Zionism is anti-Semitism. You now have a extremely racist government in Israel. You have ministers who are supporters of Kanye. They've been convicted of inciting racism, racist attacks, now are in the government of Israel. They want to remove, physically remove Palestinians. Arabs from the West Bank and Gaza and even from Israel. Wouldn't you say that that's a racist government? Oh, absolutely. And, you know, this is also one of those issues that I would expect as a as an alumni of San Francisco State that, you know, the school would also take a stance on if they're taking a stance in support of Zionism, that they would try to try to make a statement on, you know, destroying homes, on the recent statements that, you know, settlements are a top priority was just said, I think, like a week or two ago, like that, th- those are very significant things and being in the news and, you know, the timing of this report, like, like I said, it was initiated. And I think the the report was initiated in early 2021 and it wasn't released until now. And I, I, I think that this is kind of a watershed moment for Palestine activism. Like I'm seeing a lot more support for Palestine on, on social media. Um, a lot of celebrities are taking a stance on it. And it's just very interesting seeing a, a school kind of take a hard line on, on, on this issue uh, in support of Israel outside of, of kind of like the usual suspects like like Harvard, which also is in the news recently for turning away the uh, the ex-head of the uh, Human Rights Watch for uh, uh, what they call anti-Israel bias. Um, And also just being an alumni of the College of Ethnic Studies, you know, I I would really hope and expect that, you know, the College of Ethnic Studies, um, especially considering their history um, and their significance, would also take a a stance and maybe make a public statement to um, condemn this report as well. And the history of uh, the ADL, the uh, the Zionists at uh, San Francisco State. What is their history and relationship to the Ahmed program? Yeah, so Ahmed has been kind of under attack, is, is what I would say, for, for quite some time. Very recently in, in 2020, there were a few open classrooms. Uh, one was in the fall of 2020, the other one was in spring of 2021, were, were shut down by by Zoom, Facebook, and YouTube, very much as a part of this targeted campaign by, by organizations like ADL, the Lawfare Project, which, you know, interesting lawfare, using law for warfare, <laughs> very, very violent uh, language and naming there. And that, uh, was, that was funded by the Northern California Jewish community. Was, yeah. was that true? Uh, so I, 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 again, I, I don't know like the, the very specifics, but that, that, that is what I have heard. Um, 
and uh, ADL and Academic Engagement Network, uh, Hillel International, all these groups have waged kind of this, this, this long campaign against um, Ahmed studies specifically at San Francisco State. Uh, very recently, the uh, Dr. Abdelhadi of Ahmed studies got an award by the Middle East uh, Studies Association. And uh, right now there is a very aggressive online campaign to condemn the Middle East Studies Association for, for giving Dr. Abdelhadi that award. Um, and, you know, a lot of that is just uh, 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 tweets referencing uh, the Middle East Studies Association, but sometimes it does get a lot more uh, direct. I remember at the time of these open classrooms, um, I saw uh, the, these weren't even people I was following. They're just in the advertisements on Facebook that you get, uh, you, you just get advertisements in your feed from organizations who choose to uh, uh, post ads to certain demographics. Um, and they were posting ads in uh, the San Francisco Bay Area um, uh, of um, uh, that, uh, that, that young man who um, killed the protesters in the, the Black Lives Matter protest. Um, I'm forgetting his name, but uh, um, uh, he's the he's the man who brought the the assault rifle to to the protests um, to defend businesses that he likes or something and then uh, shot some protesters. They were putting uh, uh, a picture of him next to um, uh, Leila Khaled, um, who was one of the featured spe speakers in the event, um, and basically drawing drawing a connection to uh, to white supremacy um, being present on campus uh, in the ethnic studies department. Interestingly enough. And Facebook has hired actually Israeli government officials to yeah. sanitize and censor Facebook. What, Absolutely. What yeah. has been the role of, of Facebook and some of social media and, and, and the Zionists and the, the Israeli government in trying to crush dissent and target people? Yeah, so it's been very aggressive uh, censorship, um, essentially. Uh, Facebook uh, and uh, the uh, Facebook and Instagram, which are, are both owned by the same company, um, uh, very aggressively censor um, uh, anti-Zionist content, um, pro-Palestinian statements. Um, around that time of the, the assault on Gaza, they were, they were um, deleting accounts and deleting posts uh, in support of the Palestinians. Uh, Ahmed Studies' own Facebook page got taken down for over a year, I think. Um, and it was only due to the work of, of uh, a lot of a lot of supporters that really got the page uh, put back up. Uh, and YouTube did the same thing. They they essentially just suspended YouTube suspended the account for a long time, um, and Facebook actually took it down. And and that that's pretty consistent across the board. And we were seeing similar stuff happen with the Black Lives Matter protests too. A lot of those posts were taken down uh, around the same time. Um, uh, which is, uh, which is also interesting. There seems to be some uh, uh, very significant pattern of that happening on, on Facebook specifically. And what was the role of the University of uh, San Francisco State University uh, management, the president? What role did they play in defending the AMED program? It's a, a program at the Ethnic Studies Department and should be defended by the university. What was their role? Yeah, so that was actually a focus of uh, some recent faculty grievance panels. Some uh, there, were, there were these public faculty grievance panels fired by, uh, filed by Dr. Abdelhadi and uh, Dr. Tomomi Kinukawa, um, uh, who's also a faculty member at San Francisco State, um, and helped co-organize the events um, about the uh, university not supporting these events being broadcast. Um, there were events by um, by Ahmed Studies, they were um, uh, co-sponsored by other academic departments. Um, it was uh, for enriching students and the community. Um, and it, the, the university really had an obligation to, to ensure the academic freedom of, um, of the organizers. And they really did not play as very, uh, they, they did not take a very strong position in defending them. They, essentially took direction from the Lawfare Project, um, saying that uh, the co-organizers could get uh, in 
there, there could be legal ramifications for it without kind of providing resources from the, for them instead of suggesting they find their own uh, legal counsel. Um, the university- So they were, using, they were using the arguments of lawfare. Exactly. Organization that is funded probably by supporters of Israel, Zionists, as to why they shouldn't really support and defend uh, Ahmed's uh, YouTube and Zoom broadcasts. Exactly. Um, and, it, you know, it seemed very, you know, uh, it, there was an option in the contract with Zoom, too, to um, uh, basically mediate and try to um, uh, resolve and um, like mediate the issue of broadcasting this that the university also decided not to exercise. Um, which really shows the kind of cavalier attitude that the university had towards protecting the academic freedom of the, the co-organizers and the other panelists. And what happened during those grievance hearings and what were the outcomes? Yeah, so the, the grievance hearings were, um, they were fairly long. I, I attended, I attended uh, two of them. There was a, there was a third grievance hearing uh, regarding the university's lack of support um, for the Ahmed Studies Program, um, which I'll talk about in a moment, but but both of those grievance panels ended in a unanimous faculty um, uh, uh, vote that the university did in fact violate the professor's academic freedom and that they should take steps to ensure that the recording of the panel gets broadcast and that they should issue an apology to both professors. Um, what ended up happening was the, the president of the university, Lynn Mahoney, uh, vetoed both um, grievance panel decisions, um, uh, which you know I'm not surprised about, but it is uh, um, pretty astounding that the president has the ability to uh, uh, veto uh, hearing panel grievances that were essentially against uh, the university. It's the university vetoing decisions against itself. Um, and then the same thing happened with the uh, other grievance panel about the university's lack of support for Ahmed studies, um, where they, uh, they ruled that the uh, university should fulfill its end of the contract with Dr. Abdelhadi to help support and build the Ahmed studies program, which um, it hasn't done for 15 years, despite, uh, despite there being a, an MOU to that effect. And the union as well, the California Faculty Association, how were they involved in this? Were they involved? Yeah, so the California Faculty Association um, is the, the, the union representing um, doctors uh, Abdelhadi and Kinukawa. Uh, they've been supporting, uh, uh, the, the San Francisco chapter has been supporting Dr. Abdelhadi uh, and Dr. Kinukawa in the grievance hearings. Um, but that's also, uh, uh, you know, something that we really need to draw attention to is that the the statewide uh, governing body of this organization really needs to take this issue seriously because, you know, th these issues of academic freedom, about um, violating contracts with faculty, um, about helping, you know, I, I would say helping facilitate these attacks by the Lawfare Project on them um, by, at the very least. Um, uh, intimidating professors, you know, these are issues that affect all faculty. Um, and you never know when you're going to need that support. And so I, we, we really need the statewide uh, uh, California Faculty Association to step up. And the history of the ADL, they actually had a blacklist of professors in the United States and Canada and around the world, but mm -hmm. they were actually targeting uh, Palestinian professors uh, and faculty critical of Israel the ADL um, and uh, trying to get them removed. Um, what kind of organization is the ADL? Yeah, so the ADL uh, to me seems like it's 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 kind of a, a mixed bag. Um, in some regards, it seems like uh, a, an extension of the Israeli government's lobbying power. Um, the United States. Um, uh, uh, in addition to its its call uh, its calls against anti-Semitism, um, but you know the, the the consequences of that are, are these very targeted attacks on individuals and universities. Um, many uh, many faculty at universities have been targeted by organizations like the ADL. Uh, very famously, Stephen Salida, uh, which I think was at University of Illinois, uh, was denied a position. Uh, 
at that university specifically uh, due to the actions of uh, the lobbying of organizations like the ADL. And there is an organization called the International Holocaust Remembrance Association, IHRC. Why don't you talk about that organization and how it's been used politically around the world? Yeah, so, so what, what's really at issue uh, here is this, this definition of, of what um, Judaism is um, and, and the, the, what Zionism plays in that, in that identity. Um, and so this organization has, has uh, put forth this um, uh, definition of what Judaism is that includes Zionism. Um, and so uh, what part of what, what this campus climate assessment report was basically doing was adopting that definition of Jew Judaism on campus, um, which would protect, uh, protect Zionists against criticism. And the, uh, the regime, the Israeli regime, the Zionists were actually in collusion with South African apartheid. Uh, they helped uh, South Africa, the apartheid regime. Histadrut, which is the Israeli Trade Union Federation, actually was building tanks and helping arm uh, the apartheid regime in South Africa. Do you think there's a relationship of, of the ideology of apartheid with what's going on in Israel now? Oh, absolutely. Um... You know, apartheid is also uh, a, uh, was a consequence of settler colonial ideology in South Africa, um, and you really are seeing that that play out in in, in a very similar way um, in Israel uh, and Palestine, and that and that's one reason why um, uh, that's what's one thing that contributed to the BDS movement is that they saw saw a lot of the success of. Um, of uh, boycott, divest, and sanctions in, in South Africa, um, which contributed to the movement to uh, uh, the BDS of Israel. And it seems like this is going on, not just at San Francisco State, but other campuses around the country and around the mm -hmm. world, uh, that uh, professors, Palestinians, active academics who are critical of Israel are uh, threatened politically and now being charged with being anti-Semitic. Uh, is that the case? Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, I've seen it happen on, at San Francisco State. Um, Harvard's been in the news the last couple of years uh, for that very same issue, University of Illinois, uh, as I've mentioned. Um, this is kind of happening everywhere. And, you know, it's, um, uh, it, it's, it's, it's especially concerning um, when it happens. You know, it's, it's concerning all over, but it, it, it is really concerning when it happens in ethnic studies programs. Um, because you're seeing these like very limited definitions of what ethnic studies can and should be um, in these areas. Um, and I think that really played out in the re recent legislation in California that, that um, put forward a very limited ethnic studies curriculum that, that kind of intentionally um, removed Palestinians from, from the ethnic studies curriculum. And so and when you see all this narrowing at the university level, it's, it's, it's not just happening at the university level, it's, it's happening everywhere. Um, activism in, in every respect is narrowing. And in, in California as well, there was an attack on ethnic studies by uh, Zionists. How did they attack the ethnic studies programs in California? Yeah, so, so recently there was some legislation to, um, to enact uh, mandatory ethnic studies um, uh, at the public universities in California, um, and then also uh, uh, at the high school level. Um, and uh, especially at the high school level, there was this long campaign because there was the inclusion of Arab Americans, there was inclusion of Palestine. Um, and then there was also a lot of movements from, from other groups, you know, trying to be included in this uh, uh, ethnic studies model curriculum, which, um, which was basically what was adopted. One was a, a mandate for ethnic studies courses, and then uh, attached to that was a model curriculum uh, um, that was written for schools to reference. They're not required to use it, but it, it is what many schools are going to reference. Um, there was this uh, very significant campaign to get uh, Arab Americans um, and Palestinians specifically removed from this model curriculum. Um, and uh, by very much the same groups like uh, Academic, Engage Academic Engagement Network, ADL, Halal International, um, that ultimately succeeded. Um, 
And so now we have this very limited uh, ethnic studies model curriculum that, that does mirror the very limited ethnic studies curriculum you see in higher education as well. You consider that racist? Oh, absolutely. You know, there's um, uh, gen generally ethnic studies curriculum is limited to uh, African American studies, uh, American Indian studies, um, Latino Latino studies, um, and uh, Asian American studies. Uh, and uh, at some universities in their ethnic studies uh, departments, they usually have departments of ethnic studies. Sometimes it's even more limited than that. Um, and what you see there is this very, uh, you know, lim limited, often dated curriculum that doesn't just exclude Arab Americans. It also goes um, uh, to ex exclude uh, often Central Americans and South Americans uh, instead of favoring, you know, like Mexican American studies. Um, uh, African American studies can sometimes, uh, you know, leave out some other identities attached to that. Um, uh, the issue is that, you know, we're not, all these groups aren't just these homogenous identities that need to be studied as such. Um, you know, there's, there's complexity to all these identities. Um, you know, Asia is a huge continent. It's, it's very problematic to, you know, limit Asian American studies to just like a very, um, uh, you know, limited group of people because there's a lot of people being left out of that. And the struggle for ethnic studies at San Francisco State uh, led to a six month strike, uh, led to the formation of the, the uh, Third World Liberation Studies, which was changed, the name was changed. But um, it would seem that, uh, you know, that this issue of the uh, effort to try to prevent Palestinian studies and the history of the Palestinians to wipe out that history, is, that, is there opposition to that in the Ethnic Studies Department? You know, I think there's definitely opposition coming from the students in the College of Ethnic Studies. Um, you know, I, 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 you know, helped organize for a, a graduate seminar uh, in Ahmed Studies um, and got a lot of support from students, including uh, uh, six cohorts of alumni in addition to my cohort who, who signed this letter in support. Um, so the, I would say there's overwhelming support from the students. Um, but on the faculty side of things, you know, I, I think the support is limited. Um, you know, we got very few responses from faculty. Um, uh, some of the ones we did get were a uh, little aggressive and a little threatening, uh, uh, specifically the ones from current and former administrators um, in the college. Uh, so, you know, I don't know if there's just, uh, I, I had only been there for, I think, a year at that point. I don't know what the culture is among the faculty there, but, you know, I, I, it did not feel like they were very engaged in the, uh, um, the, the real world uh, material conditions that, you know, um, maybe the students taking uh, in the ethnic studies program are experiencing. They, they just didn't really seem to have a strong, uh, uh, you know, a strong attachment to, to that side of things. And the ethnic studies department, when it was started, or that struggle, was the view was that uh, not only should you study the history of African Americans, Asians, uh, uh, other people, but also you should be involved in the community. It should be an activist program fighting against discrimination, fighting against systemic racism as part of the program. Is oh, that's how uh, uh, Professor Rabab Abdulhadi sees it, as far as uh, what her program is. Yeah, she's very much a scholar activist um, and is very much in, uh, you know, is involved in a lot of like student activism uh, and supporting student activism and kind of other like faculty and staff um, groups like cops off campus. She's very involved in, um, you know, which is, you know, this is one of the reasons why I got involved with Dr. Abdelhadi. You know, it's, it's, it's a very different experience, you know, uh, working with uh, uh, professors who are, you know, they want to do more than just you know move up in the bureaucracy of higher education. Um, they they want to really make an impact, um, which is like you know it's something that I was very grateful for, especially you know being in an environment where most faculty kind of weren't doing that. Like it was it was almost like a breath of fresh air, and you know I'm very fortunate to now also be in a program where I have some faculty doing that same thing um, at University of Minnesota, um, which 
you know, one reason is that they don't have a very um, a, a, as strong a Zionist presence on that campus. But uh, you know, it 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 is something that I think is 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 essential to uh, uh, the the you know the ethnic studies idea. It's like you there's more to it than just publishing papers and getting the promotion. It's uh, uh, you know there needs to be an investment and. In, in people, in, in, in our communities, um, and in, in affecting actual change. And especially with the rise of racism, xenophobia, anti-Semitism, homophobia, it seems yeah. like there's a rise of fascism. Uh, and I understand there were even some fascists who came to uh, Professor Rabba, Rab, Rabab Habdihadi's class to intimidate her. Yes, yeah, that that was that was uh, I think a year or two before my time there, but um, I, I I did hear about that, yeah, and and you know these are issues that um, are very much connected to this um, you know struggle for Palestine, um, these issues of you know I I just spoke to another student uh, who who attended San Francisco State, uh, the same College of Ethnic Studies, who was telling me that you know they had a lot of problems in the Africana Studies course. Um, specifically because some of the readings were, were dated and, you know, had some, uh, you know, homophobic like sentiments throughout the readings. Um, and they, they were, their concerns and which were, you know, shared by their whole cohort, their concerns were, were kind of brushed off um, as, uh, as kind of like not being in, in important concerns. Um, so, you know, I, I, I think that the, these issues, um, uh, not being addressed, it is having these like very real consequences too on on uh, on the curriculum and and on the students. Um, and kind of this hostile environment is kind of uh, uh, almost seems like ever present in the department, whether it's from uh, you know fascist students coming to intimidate professors, or if it's from you know professors just not taking the concerns of students seriously. And. There has been a statement issued to challenge this uh, so-called San Francisco State University climate assessment. Uh, yeah. What can people do who, first of all, want find out about it and want to do something about it? What can they do? Yeah. So um, uh, the the you know the the statement um, uh, will be published soon. We've we've uh, we've been. Uh, uh, getting co-signers for it. Um, a lot of organizations have signed on so far um, and have collaborated with us on this uh, response. You know, what we really need is for um, uh, people to uh, contact us, um, uh, for people to, you know, make their voice heard. And uh, um, there's all these public forums available specifically for San Francisco State University uh, Board of Trustee meetings. Um, uh, the academic senate meetings, um, they can contact um, administrators in the university just to really like make sure that they know that this isn't something that we're just gonna you know like roll over and accept this um, this this definition of anti-Semitism that they're putting forward um, uh, because you know it's it's not in the interest of, of the community, the San Francisco State community, and the people of this country. I mean, to, yeah, be, to be critical of Israel and, and being uh, told you're anti-Semitic for being critical of Israel is uh, a very reactionary policy, as well as saying that Judaism equals Zionism. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I, you know, a, a, a lot of people would even say that it's, it's, it's anti-Semitic to, to equate the two uh, in itself. Well, if you have a racist ideology, uh, as I think the Zionists do, uh, mm -hmm. against the Palestinians, and they did support apart the apartheid regime. I, I guess it, 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 is a, it is a view, it's a view, the worldview that it has to do with the, an alliance with those kind of ideologies, which are reactionary and fascistic. Yeah, and you know, I, I think that this is a, a critical time to challenge this too. Um, you know, the uh, far-right government has been, uh, you know, kind of re- uh, re-elected in Israel, uh, never really left, but you know, they're, they're taking even more hardline stances. Um, and there's been promises of a lot more, a lot more violence and aggression coming um, for Palestinians, which, which is, uh, 
you know, I, I, I don't really take those words lightly um, coming from them. I, I, it's, it's, it's going to happen. It is happening. Uh, um, and I mean, the whole history of genocide uh, against peoples, whether it's Jewish people, Palestinian people, uh, you know, all kinds of people, um, Armenian people. I mean, there's a long history of, of uh, racist and genocidal attacks. And I think that this new government uh, could be a catastrophe for the people of uh, the Palestinian people, the people of the world, uh, the way they're behaving. Absolutely. Yeah. And I, it is time like for, you know, I, it, 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 there, there is a uh, precedent for universities to, you know, really make a statement of support. You know, we, we've, we saw a lot of, um, and continue to see a lot of public support for Ukraine. Um, uh, and, you know, I'm not really seeing the same kind of public support for, uh, for Palestine, um, at the same scale, uh, uh coming from institutions, uh, my, my current university issued a, a very public statement uh, in support of Ukraine. Um, and I'm just not really seeing the same thing happen elsewhere. And of course, it's U.S. guns and weapons uh, in Israel and the billions of dollars the United States is giving to the government of Israel, this apartheid government of Israel, to suppress the Palestinians. So it, it's uh, pretty, uh, I think, uh, duplicitous to say that you're going to support democracy and the rights of the Ukrainians, but you're going to allow the United States, you're going to fund the actual suppression of Palestinians and Palestinian rights in, in Israel and in West Bank yeah. and Gaza. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and you are seeing, uh, uh, you know, the, again, there's some very interesting language kind of emerging out of the support for Israel, uh, for, for Ukraine um, and Israel. Uh, there was a term I, I heard on the news, a lethal, lethal aid, like the U.S. is delivering lethal aid to Israel. Um, you know, so you're just seeing kind of the language being like changed uh, in in different contexts. For 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 um, for Ukraine, uh, because you know they're they're in the, the I guess like the like the, the victim position in this situation. You know, it's it's aid, kind of these weapons. But uh, uh, and then you're seeing kind of the same like like aid language being used for for Israel. Um, you know, which is interesting to me, um, and it, it, it is very hypocritical. It's it's you know like picking and choosing uh, uh, which governments to support at different times, um, just to kind of like put forth this certain narrative. Um, you know that that it, it is it is very troubling. You know, I I I, I don't really see a uh, I, I don't really see a moral stance happening here uh, coming from the United States. And that has a long history. And the United States, in fact, was involved in supporting the apartheid regime in South Africa. Uh, they armed uh, Booth Lazy, uh, who a chief Booth Lazy, who uh, got millions of dollars from uh, the U.S. government, which was sent through the AFL-CIO into South Africa, it was used to murder, terrorize strikers, trading us uh, to keep the apartheid regime in power. So. I think the history of the United States in supporting an apartheid regime right in South Africa is well known, should be well known among people in the United States. So I want to thank you for joining us. Uh, we've been talking with Leith Gulam. He is with the University of Minnesota in Gender, Women's uh, Sexuality Studies, and also is supporting the fight uh, against this uh, effort by the San Francisco State University Administration Climate Assessment Report, which uh, actually has been molded and organized by ADL and uh, the uh, Hillel International Academic Engagement Network to uh, basically implement their idea of that Judaism equals Zionism. And if you're critical of Israel, you're an anti-Semitic. So thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Steve. Good. Um, oh, maybe you can say uh, what peop where people can go on the internet if they want to get more information. Um, so your, your, uh, just one moment. Uh, yeah, so you're, you're welcome to, uh, 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 contact me. Uh, my, my, my email is, uh, L E I T H, uh, G H U L O U M at gmail.com. You can also follow, uh, Ahmed studies on, uh, on social media, on, uh, 
Twitter, uh, Instagram, and Facebook um, for for updates. The letter, the, our response letter, will be published very soon, and we we will also post resources for people uh, who want to get involved. Okay. Well, I want to thank you join, for joining us again on Work Week, and this is an important subject uh, about defending the rights of Palestinians and the rights of all people to be critical of Israel and uh, defend the Palestinian people. So thanks for joining us on Work Week.